We're live. Yeah. We're live. Hey, everybody. It's filling up. Yeah. My name is Matt Schaffman. You guys know me from UX and AZ. I'm Senior Director at, at New Desic, uh for Ideation Design. We have uh, yeah. Danny Robles here. He's the director for the regional uh, portion of Ideation Design. And today we're going to be talking about product strategy. We'll actually have another uh, guest coming in, uh, Morgan Sennucker. She is a solution architect here at New Desic. She'll also be a- Welcome, Morgan. Us. Hello. Wait, hold on. <laughs> we just started this podcast. <laughs> Let's do this. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of hiccups, like me putting my mic in my pocket, which is not a good <laughs> we start. We didn't get trained on media <laughs> yeah. video production. It's right? not a good start. Um, thank you for uh, joining. Um, so let's kick it off with a discussion around um, what is product? Well, before we get into product, don't we want to talk about the vision? No. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yes, let's talk yeah. about vision. Like vision for this podcast. Oh, right? vision for the podcast. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. That's what you said we were going to do before. Right <laughs> right before this. <laughs> I had it all in my head, and then we changed it up right yep. at the last second. Yep. That's what we do here, and that's what actually we do all the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's talk about well, our vision. I mean, you know, we were talking about as we're getting prepared for this podcast, and our channel was we walked through this um, really just really looking to start up the conversation, right? So we've been practicing here at New Desk, we've been practicing a lot of things around product strategy, product user experience, uh, really looking into the industry and seeing, you know, what are those best practices and then taking them into action and then learning from them. Uh, but as we continue with that, we wanted to bring it out to the community and see, you know, start that conversation, like what, what's working for you guys? What's working for us? What can we try out and just continue to grow as we're as we're 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 promoting this product mindset, and then also design thinking and user experience. So, yeah. And anybody and uh, the five people that are watching at this point, um, <laughs> if you have any questions, we can uh, definitely field those questions while we're going through this. Um, I want to you know try to be as interactive as possible. So definitely give us our comments in the thing. If you can can't hear us, make sure you tell us that too, because that gets a little embarrassing. Uh, you go an hour and, and you nobody can hear you. Um, yeah, I definitely want to um, add to that with, with design thinking. And I think kind of leads us into something that I don't know if a lot of people understand what design thinking really is. Um, I think a lot of people will see the words design and then thinking and think, oh, must be thinking about design. Right. Right. So, I mean, eventually you get there, but it's more ab about the principle, four principles that we came up with uh, here. And not really we came up with it, but we tried to orchestrate it um, with uh, being customer first, being goal driven, um, being um, uh, um, or, uh, organ um, efficient in, in our processes and our operations, and as well as using collaboration as a tool like design thinking to make it all uh, go smoothly amongst everyone that's trying to come up with a uh, with a um, solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. So those, uh, you have anything to add on that? No? Okay. See, she's here for- <laughs> I'm here for moral support. Moral support. <laughs> we need but I, I mean, to that with, with design thinking, right? So like, you know, we've, we've gone in and applied design thinking, like to your point is a lot of people hear the word design thinking and they think it's for designers. Right. And so some of the success that we've been doing is to be able to apply it in the places that you wouldn't think about, right? Yep. Such as problems with, uh, with utilities, um, you know, uh, internal efficiency type employee efficiency type plays, things like that. Building yeah. backlogs. Building backlogs. Uh, things that you normally wouldn't have seen um, the word design thinking, we're applying it there. And ultimately what we're doing is just creating empathy, right? Yep. It's that empathy. And, and, and to me, I don't know to you guys, but when I first heard that word, um, it seemed such a fluffy word to me. Yeah. I, it was almost impossible to describe <laughs> what it meant. <laughs> yeah. Like, so even like, when I was being described to, I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Right? Because and, I had that mindset right. of 
just design. And that's where we came from, we came from visual design type world, mm -hmm. ad agencies, paper, you know, printing, things yeah. like that. So it definitely was not a uh, seem it would have seemed that it would be easy to get into. But at first, it was like, wow, this is totally yeah. different. Yeah. And then we see how that kind of translates to, to identifying people's problems, um, really seeing how you can influence people. Absolutely. Um, as they're either within the problem that we're trying to solve and how that technology needs to fit into their lives. So, yep. I had a, um, a thought when you were talking about that, you know, when we think talking about design thinking and maybe somebody has been doing this for many years and they're going, well, what do I do then? Right. If you're doing design thinking, what, what am I doing mm -hmm. at this point? You know, and, I think what we can recognize as uh, as a product approach, a particular product approach that you know maybe we can deem it as starting to age out, and we're trying to do a different way, but but still being done almost in every industry um, is you know the the BRD right. uh, type of approach, the gathering of requirements in a waterfall type of uh, environment, you know as we're you know, let's talk about how we how people are doing it today and how this yeah. is different. And it's not like we're talking about changing the way you do like the activities in business. Right. Right. So like when when we're talking about the design thing, you and I always talk about this and Morgan, you probably heard me say this before. It's the transfer of energy. Right. And so when we're doing design thinking, it's it's how do we how do we translate our vision and strategy across a large group of people? within a short amount of time. Right. Right. So with that, you know, like looking at like how we need to pivot as things change, as the market changes, mm -hmm. as ideology within a company changes, um, you can pivot quickly. Right. If you do it through design thinking. Uh, the other route would be to slowly roll things out to get them prepared and ready and having things like a BRD right. to tell everybody, hey, this is where we're headed. And then you're starting to to change and transfer people to start thinking about that. There's a lot of transformation. Whereas with design thinking, we're looking to have exponential transformation within a you know within a setting where we can quickly move and make a decision. Yeah, absolutely. The alignment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you work in a lot of utilities things right now, and so what what has been a challenge from the mentality, you know, their mentality of when we first started at these mm -hmm. at a utility, meaning energy and gas utility. If, yeah. Um, so they were very much um, pitch it over the fence, right? This is what I need to build. And now I have a dev team over there that's going to build it. I pitch it over the fence. They're going to pitch it back. And my team's going to UAT the entire platform that's been built, that's taken months or years to build. Um, but we are slowly changing instead of pitching it over the fence, let's build a door. And they come to our backlog refinement meetings. They are a part of the process. We're also shifting the focus instead of not just their needs as stakeholders, but also from their end users, which are often the field workers, the, um, the guys and gals out fixing the power poles. Um, they're the ones that are using this not the people in the business that are giving us the requirements. So how can we go for ride-alongs? Can we get them in and a part of the process, which we did, right? We had um, whiteboarding widgets on a dashboard that field supervisors needed. So instead of waiting to have their dashboard built for them, they were a part of designing it. So that's where the shift yeah. is happening. So it's a, simple as creating that the context, right? Or yeah. the empathy to understand like what what is this person that I'm developing for? Why do they even care about this feature? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes simple. those requirements get built in a bubble, mm -hmm. right? So and and then pushed out to those workers. And then they're kind of like, well, why are you changing this stuff that it, you never even talked to me about it, you know? Yeah. And maybe there's that attitude of like, we don't need to talk to you about it. That's what we want to do. Right. Because right. we have these things, but they don't even tell them that either. neither. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. We need we need these business levers to be pulled. And the workers are like, but I need to get this lineup. 
Right. <laughs> so yeah. Um, we have a chat. Oh. Um, their customers are overseas. Ah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, that was something that we we the time the time issues with the overseas offshore. Yeah, offshore. I think you know maybe that's a topic that we should talk about because we've got some people that are that are working and doing it successful um, yeah. with an offshore team. Yeah. But you want mm -hmm. you you probably have more yeah. of an experience. Yeah, I that. mean we do we do. Uh -huh. I was just saying you don't have to hold it too. I don't think you don't. Have <laughs> uh, we're learning here yeah. folks um yeah so we just align our meeting schedules right so we have india on most of our projects and that's a complete night and day flip right that's 12 and a half hours including um a team here in phoenix and then team in east coast time and we're able to find those windows of time where we can be together and then reframe those conversations to be about those users awesome. and less of the requirements. Some of the some of the things that that we're exploring is using like tools like like Jira, you know, where you can add personas to help kind of build that. I think when you're doing offshore, that's ADO where like with ADO um, and just kind of seeing how we can help them understand the why, and so that they're empowered to come up with a solution even while we're asleep, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like we're just experimenting at this point. But I think that that's the key is like, you know, like you still need that collaboration and it is, it is a challenge. Um, and I, I think one of the, the things that we've used and it's probably not the best answer is that whenever we have an offshore team, we always have, I'm sorry, an offshore team and an offshore dynamic, we have the onshore if the users are here in the United States we have those, we do our discovery and we bring in a leadership team that their sole responsibility is to create that empathy and understanding so that they can, they can translate it, transfer it over to the offshore team. Um, but I, again, we're, we're trying to leave that opportunity for them to, to add more value, right? Like not prescribe it too much. Yeah. yeah. And I think also is the, um, Right? Well, that's why I'm saying if it doesn't have to be next to my mouth, you can just. <laughs> <laughs> we only have two mics. <laughs> okay. Um, is like that contextual inquiry, yeah. doing a lot of screen sharing. Like, I'm not going to Michigan all the time to do these things. There's a lot of discovery work, a lot of usability work, and observing the way people work with a lot of screen sharing, right? Unless they're working on a physical item i mean i guess that's where it gets more difficult but mm -hmm. most of our stuff is software and we can do it via screen share my question is um does offshore think of us as offshore and they're on <laughs> probably is a true so that, <laughs> um yeah i mean there's the, i will say there's a ton of talented like uh, people that we've worked with from and and usually surprise us in the way that they they create that empathy and like it'd be yeah. interesting to bring them in and see um, see what their thoughts are. Yep. Yeah, especially here at Nudesic, we're you know, we're we don't use our global services always the same way maybe as some other companies, you know, or we uh, they can handle whole projects in in Europe, you know, mm -hmm. and they're not just augmenting teams here um, in the United States. So it, um, we definitely have to collaborate a lot on product. You know, we don't want to change that brand just because they're in a different area and, and a company says, yeah, we can go completely global services on this mm -hmm. project and then have them do it completely different. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So we, the challenge would be is to align our, you know, our services and, and our processes to, to all the people. And now that we're IBM, we have a lot of yeah stuff going on with that you know being able to get training through that and they obviously are a huge proponent of design thinking how they might even coin the phrase who knows like i remember watching them a long time ago yeah. about design thinking and um the yeah. loop yeah, the, the loop, loop. Mm -hmm. um envision that was a that was an awesome um what would you call it documentary yeah. that they put out like really cool and just seeing like how they're you know, a lot of that stuff, we were influenced by that. Oh, absolutely. Like, definitely. Like, yeah. 
Um, I, I mean, I, I was at Rackspace five, six years ago during the some some conference, and they went up there, and mm-hmm. and I was thinking IBM design thinking, <laughs> like that's such an oxymoron. <laughs> <to me. laughs> but it was like, wow, oh, yeah. this these these guys are a lot more yeah. into that than I thought. I know, you know, always knew like server design or something or right. whatever. You know, they. <laughs> Um, you know, hat. hardware and yeah. things like that, but never really thought of them as being a product like them themselves a product, but like mm-hmm. supporting product. I mean, yeah. they support their own products using design thinking. So yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, we have a lot of topics today, and my screen think, just keeps going. Down. So we're just going to throw out some topics, and then if yeah. you guys could tell us which ones you're interested in. Yeah. We'll do a deep dive on a lot of this stuff. A lot of us is like, a lot of this is curiosity, right? Like we're really curious and just kind of exploring, you know, what the worlds are, product strategy, user experience, and then also how do you apply those to a business, right? Yeah. So. Well, let's, let's understand, you know, maybe the world of product strategy through, which I think a lot of people that would be watching this channel would probably fall within maybe product designer type roles eventually. Maybe they're visual designers right now. Maybe they're researchers right now. Yeah. And they kind of go down those tracks and there's a lot to do there. So I think somebody could possibly make a living just doing that stuff all the time. But I think when we start thinking about well, where do I go next? I get that a lot in the community. You know, what, what can I do with this? and I can't find visual design jobs anymore, right? Yeah. Or I, it's harder to find that. Although if you're a really good visual designer, I think you got a job for life because it is kind of hard to find them um, anymore. Because, yeah, the, I mean, so not to interrupt, yeah. but like just do it flowing. every time. I'm sorry, I'm in Every time. You can I started that. thinking through my head, right? So like you got this, like there was this big old thing back in 2008, 2007, like this digital native, um, you know, this digital native, like, transformation of people saying, I'm a digital native, right? Like, and I think those digital natives. I don't natives, even know what that, I don't even yeah, know so like, that term so, <laughs> Digital native? Like, yeah, so, like, it was, like, the, the people that have grown up with, with uh, digital experiences with a mobile phone, with things oh, like that. right, yeah. Whereas you have, I see. You have no, people, like, our age, right, yeah. that transition from tape to CD to. Yeah. Rainbows to, were in black To MP3, white, right? And so, so I've got like, because this is to your visual designer question, yeah. right? Like, there's something in me that says that this, this, these digital natives are gonna, they're gonna, they crave physical experiences. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's why you see an uptick in a lot of like, you know, like card games and things that are physical. Mm-hmm. And so, I, I, I get, I, I. In Which, my mind, by the way, I'm interrupting you. I can get behind the yeah. board games yeah. thing because it's so much more tactile yeah. than. And you can, I can, I can get behind right. the strategies yeah. and, and, and the length of time you have to focus on something. Right. I mean, with this day and age of like blip, 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 yeah. I'm going to like, can't focus on anything, but yet you can focus on a three hour game, maybe right. more yeah. is amazing. I don't so, even know. I don't know. To me, it's like, you know, it just feels like there's going to be a, like almost like a cottage industry of just, yeah. you know, visual designers that can still do graphic design, things yeah. like that. So I think it's I always know. a need. I mean, we just did an exercise yeah. with like little we, cards. And we got a huge, like a really awesome response. There's yeah. something about holding something physical yeah. that still has that that feeling. But I was given an NFT and I, I just like kept on dropping <laughs> it. What do I do with it? it? <laughs> Although I'm, ex- I'm experiencing <laughs> with like a frame that, that can display NFT. Well, that's a yeah. good conversation. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but yeah, so like, I mean, we, we had talked about like, you know, we can share some of the, some of the people in the, the books have influenced yeah. us from a product strategy perspective. And really, you know, one of the, the ones that Morgan can talk to about is the project to products, right? So yeah. by Mike Curtin, hopefully I spelled, I, I pronounced that correctly, but um, yeah, awesome book. Awesome. Totally recommend it. Um, it definitely goes through why companies are failing if they can't get onto this product. Mm. And we'll put all these in the link in that yeah. Yeah. And this is like digital transformation. Digital transformation. Project, product is huge on that. delivery. How do we move from that waterfall mindset of just meeting delivery dates to actually solving problems? 
Yeah. And that's where like, I realized like the, cause we, we were practicing this, right? We still are. We're like, like little baby that found a toy and we're like, let's go try it. <laughs> and then we, we'd fall and it's like, we'd come back. And each time the project to product, like made me understand where, where was I hitting those, those, those tenants of business, of project business that nobody that says this will never change. And we're coming in and we're saying it's going to change. Yeah. And it's like, and I've had, I've had, conversations, tough ones with our customers, things that they come back and say, hey, we don't know what the hell you're up to, what you're doing over here. <laughs> and that that book helped me really just help, the, help me to show them, look, here's why we're doing some of the things that you're seeing. Well, not just um, conversations with the client, with clients, it's conversations with your own project management. Internal, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Like they're so afraid of that change yeah. and moving forward. I, I was just on a call the other day and Man, all I heard was every time we're going through this, all I heard was, "Oh, they can't do that." Oh, like yeah. I could never do. I could never yeah. get them to do that. Like yeah, sketch. You're yeah, crazy. what are you talking about? Like, and and I'm like, well, this is why we're talking. Yeah, right. We're trying to do it differently, and we are giving you a tool to be able to get through it yeah. without yeah. you having to convince them so much. Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to sketch? No. Well, do you want to go and do this? Maybe this person would just kind you don't of even lead them, them into it. Give them yeah, a you choice. don't even give them a choice. So. You just here's a pen, here's a paper, draw yeah. me what's in your head, and then and let's see what happens. That's what like you know, making it more fun to do this type of work than yeah. those spreadsheets and yeah. bullet points and all that stuff they yeah. usually see. <laughs> Although I do kind of like a good spreadsheet once in a while. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, give me a good PowerPoint slide. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out on my wall. Yeah. Um, but then another one that, like, for me was very transformative in the way I looked at things. There are two things that I looked it was It was Jared Spool's The Dipping Point. Huge. Matt was like, you're crazy, man. Like, you love listening to this guy. Um, but remember, I was like, we're, and we just started watching it. I'll watch it every oh, once yeah. in a while. Just I watch it all the time. Um, so that was I a love great. His laugh. <laughs> That's my future, is I'm going to be Jared Spool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the other part is, you know, that that's a good one. If you guys want to check that out, that really influences just how do you, how do you move from a maturity model? I think that's where we started really understanding yeah. when we're, we're talking to clients or when we're talking with teams to be aware of their maturity. Um, you don't want to go to a hundred miles per hour. You want to crawl first. Right. Yeah. So, um, and one of those maturity models, I still use constantly, mm -hmm. you know, obviously there's probably many different ones and they all have uh, five things, in it, yeah. five steps. But like when we we're going through this um, years ago, um, you know, the producer type of yeah. level yeah. where I think you can into, you know, almost automatically recognize somebody that's in a producer mindset, yeah. right? They're looking for something to make. They're just, they're doing something. Yeah. Right. And I thought it was interesting. The second one is called a connector, yeah. which you would think it's maybe more of a, a highly refined producer, but it's really a connector, a person that that can pull the people together. Yes. That's where the design thinking part really yeah. starts, right? The architect. Like we the got a connector right here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, a connect she connects. Yeah, she's a connector. And, and makes people talk about it and 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 understand why we have commonalities. I think we can probably do this in a lot of things in our yeah. lives in, in right. our climate right now. Don't but, try. Don't yeah. try. <laughs> I've already tried. <laughs> but, you know, to try to get people to talk and to relate, even if it's uh, small percentages of relation. <laughs> That's a word. We got Clayton on the Clayton on. Yeah, yeah, he's giving me some All high right. fives. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and then the next thing is scientist. Yeah. And, and the next thing is, um, oh, no, actually, the next thing is an architect. And the yeah. next thing is scientist. Yeah. And then a visionary, right? And right. then 5% of the whole, all the companies out there are really visionaries. Mm -hmm. uh, only 5%. It's probably yeah. even less than that. And we all follow them. And, and I'm coming in. We're going to be visionaries. Yeah, right. You can't go from producer to visionary that quickly. They're like, right? reject him. Yeah. So in your product, if you are a visionary in your product, Right. Some people might not understand you because you are five percent of the universe. Yeah. And yeah. and they're like, I I can't even see what it. Are you doing here? Yeah. Right. Where's Where's your bird bird down? What do I build? You're just telling me words. <laughs> you know, yeah. a book for that though is um, there's no such thing as an 
LGBT project. Oh, I'll add nice. it to your list. It's All right. Very All right. Intentional Make sure we get these change. down. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll publish we'll these. And that, like, I want to add to. I want to give credit to Envision because Envision has done a lot of, like, you know, like the 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 documentary. They they also did the product. Uh, the, what was it called? And there's another one. There's the the loop, and then there's the product, the squads. It's called squads, squads. right? It's called That's squads. Cool. That was awesome because it just kind of like I remember that day. I was like. Morgan, it's like they just spilled everything that's yes. in my, my head. This like, is amazing. That's it. Why that's are it. they inside um, my head? Yeah. And there it's was, inside. There was a, um, oh, what, what's the other organization that, designbetter.co was another one. They released a lot of, like, we got influenced by their, they had this a similar maturity model to Jared's Bull. Their maturity model was a little better because Jared's Bull had, um, it was almost like naive or something. I forget what the first version was. It just sounded oh, right. Very, yeah. very, naive. Right. Yeah. Naive. Like it was not, yeah. not naive, but it was like, like you don't know anything. Right. You're like, <laughs> we'll have to look that unknown, up. Unknown. Yeah. It's, it, it's unknown. Unknown. Or it's unknown. Unknown. We'll have unknown. to go like, back. I don't know. even know that I don't know. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> no, you, it's like pretty much you're dumb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so we kind of changed the terminology, adopted yeah. different terms. <laughs> um, but the other one is Hooked. Like, that was a big one. So I'm always looking for new books. These are, these are like, four or five years old. Yeah. So I bet there's better books out there. But Hooked was a big one that, you know, we started kind of, you know, I was talking to a friend that, that was working in, in, in Silicon Valley, and she's like, here's the book that my, my manager asked me to read. So I started reading that. And I was like, and so... Yeah, by by near, I got, I'm gonna mess up these names, uh, but look that up. It's called Hooked: How to Build Habit Forming Products. Um, but it really dived deep into a lot of things. And one of the things that we adopted from that is um, how to change behavior. Mm. That was cool. So definitely look at that. Um, and then we're starting to explore some other um, some of the other leaders out there. You know, some of the things that we're looking from a product strategy again. That's why we want to start this. You know, we want to keep, get that conversation. We've done a lot experimenting within our group, and then we're kind of exploring to see what else what else is out there. What aren't we trying, right? So yeah, and if you're out there, if you got a good book, um, just pop it into the chat um, and uh, let everybody else see it. There's this. Um, I was talking to somebody the uh, yesterday, and they liked the Visual Intelligence book. Oh yeah. So I, I'm gonna. Check that out. Yeah. What was it? Uh, um, to me. Clayton's on, but we were just talking about, I think it was, was it Inspire? I'll have to look it up. But there's another book that I'm going to look into. Here's a well. question. So I see Hook getting bad raps like it's a toxic behavior to hook people. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm assuming it's a lot of behavioral influence type of uh, yeah. information. So, so Hooked is just how do you... How do you get people? So it's definitely it talks about some of the dark patterns that you can create and things like that. Right. But it just, you know, one of the biggest things is like how do you, how do you do, how do you use these techniques that we have from a product and a user experience perspective mm -hmm. to to do good, right? Right. To, you know, like the biggest thing that we talk about, especially for the employee experience, is, you know, how do we how do we get you out within those eight hours that mm -hmm. that you're here. You know, we don't want people staying here too long. You know, we don't want overworked uh, people. So how do we change behavior, right, in those situations that we could, you know, show you something that's actually going to make you more efficient, give you things that are going to make you better, help you make better decisions, and ultimately make better decisions for your customer, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the the book is just talking about how do you, how do you change motive, change behavior, by first understanding what why they're doing the behavior that that's being expressed, right? Yeah, and it, we, do, we use this all the time in user experience. I mean, a business is coming is is asking us to help them with some business, yeah. right? And it's in in those customer experience type um, things that they want to do, like a mobile app or, yeah. or something. You want people to use the mobile app. Yep. Well, you need to. Acqu you know, they need to acquire it, right? They need to see it. They need to understand it's out there and available, yeah. right? And how do you do that? And there's some certain thing. How do you get somebody to download 
mm-hmm. that that app. Then how do you get them to use the app, yeah. right? Over and over for a long period of time. So the retention part, so that that acquisition, engagement, and and um, and retention yep. of those products. Right. Also, the mastery of the products. How do I get them to work for me a little bit more? How does it give me uh, more insight? How does it give me? Uh, how does it really truly better my life in it? Mm-hmm. And how do I get? How can I do my job to go and, and socialize that to you know and share it to other people? I I didn't have to pay a person to use the like button. Right. right. Yeah. I just had to put the like button on it. Yeah. And and if somebody likes it, they'll do it automatically. I mean, people make businesses out of product and you know, unboxing, you right. know, and maybe yeah. uh, sooner or later somebody gets paid for that because they get free products and, and maybe somebody wants you to do it more and more. And now it's your job. Yeah. Before you just did it on your own. Maybe that first person that was like, this would be fun. Let's unbox something. And then somebody goes, I'll give you $1 million to do that every time. Right. And then he's like, Oh, that's great. So, you you know, but um, yeah, I I think people do things on their own and you just have to nudge them. I think knowing dark patterns and toxic behavior, you know, that I don't know if it's toxic behavior, but definitely a dark pattern to get somebody to do that would be a reminder that we should not do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like reading a book on things you don't want to hear. Right but we all need to hear it. Right. I mean, you have that, like that social responsibility. Yeah. If somebody wants to use a bad pattern, then they're socially probably not that great. There's a lot of that conversation. Like you make sure you're, you know, you, you're responsible. Right. Yeah. And when you're seeing dark patterns that you're, you know, yeah, that's where the empathy comes into play. Right. So like, you know, like we're always challenging what the business wants to do versus what the user wants. Right. And it's like the better we represent that to the business and let them understand, hey, if you do this, I know it's a short term <laughs> gain, yeah. but long term, it's going to it's going to kill you. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of those conversations. I mean, that should be another topic. Yeah. Right. So yeah. like, um, my biggest I, my biggest influence is probably Jeff, Jeff Galthal. Yeah. You know, I've met him personally. He's done a meetup for UX and AZ back way back in the day. If you look back in the the histories of our meetup, I think we're up to almost we're at 95. This wow. year will be over 100 meetups, wow. which is pretty amazing since That's 2012. Cool, um, but he is advocating for Lean UX, right? right. And and I and now actually OKR building, so he doesn't he doesn't oh, yeah. just do. Lean UX. So if you have to make OKRs for your company, then you should look up his techniques. And I think that'd help out a lot. We should, we should uh, tap into that too. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was going to, I forgot what I was going to add, but it was just, you know, like on that, I'll, it'll come back to me in a yeah. second. <laughs> I hate that. I hate when that happens. What's your biggest influence? Project to product. Oh, the project to product. Mm-hmm. We also, I mean, the sprint, right? It isn't like Taylor Swift or anything. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift's my influence. I like Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith. (laughs) Um, But the designs, the sprint as well, the sprint book, right? Oh yeah. Jake Knapp and Google Ventures. That that we we started practicing it, and then we slowly started. Yeah, I think that's where, like, I really saw the value of design thinking. Like, design thinking was just a concept to me. Yeah but became real once we started really putting our, like we were putting ourselves out there just saying, hey, let's try this. Um, And we started seeing success. And then there were some failures and we added another Mm -hmm. adapter to it. And then, you know, and I think we've we've matured past that, but. I think a lot of people that we interact with that are traditional business people, not to disparage the way they handle it, but they often say, is that it? Right. Is that all we do? Is right. that all you do to do yeah, that? Yeah. Like it takes me yeah. weeks or maybe months <laughs> yeah. to come up with right. this thing. Yeah. And then what we're doing, it comes within days, maybe hours yeah. to make a decision mm-hmm. to go forward. Right. I'm not saying we, we make the decision that is concrete, dead on, always going to be successful. No, but we're going to make a decision pretty damn quick. Right. And we're going to move forward and we'll adjust and we'll understand it as yeah. we're working through it. Yeah. There is no, you know, I mean, I get there's industries that require dead on 
low risk, right? Like the lowest amount of risk right. you can go with, yeah. even though low, the lowest amount of risk is never going to be achievable. No risk right. is not going to be achievable. Nope. However, if, if there's an industry that can accept the risk and understand that we're pretty confident in our abilities to do it, then we should move forward mm -hmm. and, and hopefully adjust on the way. That That's the key is not to get paralyzed by risk, right? Yeah. And so understand what, and that's where, that's where design thinking helps kind of figure out, okay, in this room, <laughs> how risk adverse are we to right. losing, not achieving this? Mm -hmm. Are we willing to take a chance on it? Do, or no, actually it has to be 100% accurate. So we're gonna go for a lower one that's gonna get, so that's what I like about the workshops. It just kind of navigates that yeah. rather than having to like, have conversations, individual conversations and start, you know, you're, you're walking around doing traditional business where you're meeting one-on-one -on -one with everybody, right. trying to get them to see your way. Yeah. And then you do a big presentation, yeah. right? I mean, not to say that there's some, um, you know, conversion, conver you know, the conversion of two people separate or separately could help on a, a level of like, I see that in this group, you didn't talk you didn't say anything, mm -hmm. you almost might even be mad. Right. Right. Let's yeah. let's deal with that on a one on one level. Yeah. Not, not ignore you because that will just only increase their maybe uh, appetite to disrupt yeah. the situation of what we're trying to do here. Right. Get them more in, on board, maybe get down to maybe it's a personal level thing, you know, that you yeah. may have to deal with that when you're doing well, design thinking. I mean, that's what that the new term, which is neurodiversity, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like design thinking lends itself to to be neurodiverse, right? Yeah. Like, you know, for example, me, I'm not going to be the first one to get up in a room and start talking. I like, will first. I have to yes, see Matt right. get up, right? You get up. You get up. Oh, I get up because it's already my thousandth time or ten thousandth <laughs> time, and even then, it just gets me that. But not my but like you know like. You know, it, it's kind of like being able to share all these ideas. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the hardest part is like just telling people that are used to getting up and sharing and coming prepared to presentations and say, here's here's what we need to do, right? Yeah. Um, like this morning, I had a I had a meeting and I was thinking, okay, we're gonna workshop it out. But then I had to like figure out, okay, I know I know the the type of person I'm working with. I need to come up with ideas. So at that moment, I went project. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I went project because I, I'm like, I, I need to get my message across, mm -hmm. but like, we're going to pull it back into product. So right. like, that was interesting this morning. So let's talk about that project versus product, right? So you just said, I went to project yeah, and I'm normally product. I try to be product and I went to project. Yeah. So what's the difference? Morgan? <laughs> uh, there are lots of differences. <laughs> 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 Uh, so in project, we're more focused on a specific task that needs to be done by a certain date within a certain scope of things to do. Whereas in product, we're thinking more overall life cycle of something. We're looking at the problems and the goals to achieve versus the outcomes. date we're going to deliver it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're looking at the outcome versus the output. You got the, the leader coming and saying, here's, here's the activities I want to do, right? Mm -hmm. and saying, here you go, Morgan, <laughs> well, like, and here's the milestones. I want this by this date, that by that date. Right? It switches, right? So when you think about MVP, yeah. right, in project, what's the most viable yeah. product to send out, right? Or minimal viable product. Minimal I don't viable. even remember it. Minimal, minimal. I never use it. <laughs> yeah. Minimal valuable. viable yeah. product, right? Yeah. Yeah. But in product, it's what's the most valuable problem to solve. Yeah. And I think right. that's the key, right? The so shape. like even like the the mindset of the leader has to change. Yes. Where you're not saying like in today's today's meeting, <laughs> I came up with the like specific activities that we need to do in order to solve yeah. this problem. Versus if I was within a product mindset, I'd have identified the problem, mapped it out, and then workshopped it for all of us to figure it out. Right. Right. But with when you're within a project leader or leader that's used to an usual business, if you show up 
with posts and rows. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're like, what are these? <laughs> they're like, what? I, I told you to work Where's on this like BRD? two weeks ago. Where's <laughs> like, my you haven't done anything. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, been, I was in the shower thinking about it. <laughs> Who isn't in the shower right. thinking? So I, like I think, in the bathroom. right, exactly, and so, <laughs> so that's kind of like, you know, like that mentality is like the leader's mentality have to shift mm -hmm. from being a, like the leader, and, mm -hmm. and even myself, I'm still working on that as well. Is is it's how hard. to how to how to paint the problem for your team mm -hmm. so that they can think and go in the same direction without boxing them out, yeah. right? And that's mm -hmm. that's hard. It that's is hard. hard. Yeah. I mean, it, haven't we? We've all had the scenarios of um, what is successful. You know, what does success mean yeah. in the project or the or the effort, yeah. right? So the project manager is going. I I was able to complete all my on features, time features on time under budget and under budget, <laughs> right? But then the That's business teaching. goes. That's great. Yeah, but I didn't get anything. I right. didn't. It didn't get the return I thought it was. Well, gonna usually be. it stays there, right? right. It's right. like even even on the business side, they're managing value with a budget, right? right. Like here's how much you got, that, and and I need you to do these yeah. activities. Or they cut off some major features. Oh yes. At the end, when they didn't have the money, yeah. and they go, "Damn, wish we have done that first. But those other things but were we so can't. easy. You know, we can't <laughs> we can't pivot now because we need right we, now we, we can't. Show value. Just got to go off the Definitely. cliff, guys. Who loves to skydive? <laughs> Jump! Bring the helicopter. It's going to carry you guys right. across. Hopefully well, there's a bridge. That's the shift that you have to get them to make, right? So in project, their output, right? How many features did we deliver on time or not? But if the goal is to reduce the call center volume by 20%, that's what you should measure about, right? right. And you work to solve that. You do as many features as you can mm -hmm. within your budget to work towards the goal of reducing that call volume. Wouldn't it be great to go and take all that money that you save and go, well, you can now give it to me and do something else. <laughs> right? That's yeah. the ultimate goal. That would be so nice. Wait, Wait, I'm not focused on cost here. I know I'm expensive, yeah. right? But I just mm -hmm. saved you a ton of money. If you're not showing that, that return... For my costs, because they're only thinking, man, you cost like three hundred bucks an hour, and I know I can get somebody for a hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> cheaper, but they're not even going to give me anything either, and I feel like I'm not getting anything for anything. Right. So at this point, we should be talking about the value of which we, as consultants or as even as an employee, right? Yeah. You I'm pay not, me to I'm be here. The same <laughs> problem buying a couch, you know? Right. Like I like my wife's like, let's go buy this beautiful couch, and I'm like, no, get the five hundred dollars. Yeah, right. I'm not buying that five thousand. But it 10, only lasts for five years. Like, I'm like, yeah. I'm fine with that. I'm buying a new one every four years. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's half of the products out there, I think. At this so point, I just got to work on myself. Yeah. That I could have locked yeah. it twice. Well, it's the same for designers too, aren't they? Measure on like how many wireframes you can make. Well, yeah. given I, mean, I think like, they've gone away from that. Like, got, yeah. Whole Hopefully, thankfully, that's kind of production stuff. Yeah, like when I was at Siebel Systems, we were productionizing this yeah. this CBT, right? And it, you know, if somehow I developed a way to do twice as many than everybody else, right? But back the then, product. yeah, well, I got the product out there faster. But yeah. but the thing is also coming back to design thinking and and learning how to do things. I didn't work very well. I could say that did not work very well with sh telling other people about that process. No. Right. I think that's another problem that, that this solves that everybody sees right. how we're doing. We're it. all moving across. Right. Yeah. Why we're doing it, how we're doing it no. and what is it supposed to achieve? And, and it empowers them. And empowers mm -hmm. them to go, well, that's cool, but I can even be make it better. Like I'm down, like they're in, they're in the work and then they're like, Oh, yeah. You know, instead of saying, well, Danny, uh, you know, Morgan told me to put the red wire connected to the blue wire, <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, I got to do what they two told me. Yeah. But if they know the why and they know what we're trying to impact, yeah. well, gonna uh, actually, house, so. we're going to blow up the house yeah. <laughs> or or we're going to, you know, there's a huge event you guys are doing and the kitchen's going to blow up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to do that, you know, like be able to form yeah. up. 
as well as coming if, down. If we can have that team mentality that the team is doing better than an individual, yeah. is one I think I think is yeah. closer to my heart now after thinking through all the crappy shit I did all the way through my life. And like <laughs> and learning from that and going, you know what, this isn't about you. This is about us yeah. as leadership to help inspire people to tell us as leadership that yeah. there's might be a better way. Just that continues. Right? How do I know there's a better way right. at this point? I'm not out there all the time in the field doing stuff. Mm. But if I'm not empowering them to come back to me and say, you know, this isn't working, or I don't feel like I'm very productive. Yeah. I don't go, well, be better. Right. Think, that's not the yes, answer. I, I think do. that's uh, a that's a <laughs> well, I don't mean it. That's a topic I would love to explore, right? Yeah. Like like that. Um, what are they? A service leader, right? Like you're you're describing like a service leader. Yeah. And you're also describing like, you know, there was again the time where, you know, they uh, was a gangplank in our little yeah. local area. And there's another age another agency Co out there. Co some other agency where it was a volunteer army. And I remember they were experimenting yeah. that they all owned the company and the owner was they could vote the owner out, kind of like the, the the pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> right? And so I don't know if I could like but it was interesting. It was like an experiment and everybody <laughs> in the industry was like wondering like how's that going? Where's that gonna go? Um, but I think that's like the balance. You don't know how much, how much direction you should go and how much feedback you should get. And then how do you manage all that? That's right. cool. Um, yeah. But all right, let's talk about user experience, right? Cause that's the right. other side of our house. Right. Yep. Um, and I think, so, you know, from, you know, when I, when I, you know, the, the 4d process was a, the biggest yep. thing that, that you introduced me to, yep. um, Maybe you can talk a little bit. Yeah, so 4D, uh, there's probably a lot of different things that are similar, but we wanted to make it cooler. Um, no, um, the first D, well, of, of a D, not even just the first D, because it's this is an infinity loop, so it's wherever you start at. Um, but let's say we're starting off at discovery. So that would then, that discovery is going to, you're going to get empathy from that discovery, which will define your path going forward, right? It could be empathy with business, empathy with users, empathy with customers, all the different empathy that comes out of that discovery, mm -hmm. um, empathy that the tool stinks, <laughs> you know, a lot of stuff go, goes on in there. And you define that as a problem or something in a priority, right? There's mm -hmm. problems in there and priority. So we now are able to maybe in value, right? A value output or value um, uh, capability, right? Or, or uh, opportunity. And I'm going to now go through a process of design. So now we have discover, define, design, 3Ds. Yeah. And we're going to come back and validate that design with all that empathy that we did in the first place, mm -hmm. right? So if we don't understand, this is where you can figure it out. If I don't have empathy for this problem, I should go discover something, right? I should go look at it at least, right? Yeah. That's still discovery is just to look at it. So after I looked at it and I go, yeah, you're right. That really does suck for you. <laughs> and, and I want to help you, right? Here's a way to that it might help. And with your, with design thinking, we're going to collaboratively create a new way, right? Because you're going to do it anyway, right? The a customer or a, a employee out there is going to do this. Anyway, like they're going well, to put the, a path somewhere it, else. The intersection, right? Yeah. So in design thinking, the intersection of the delivery and the learning is as simple as a sketch, right? Absolutely. And it's like, how do we get those cycles? Shorten yeah. them, shorten okay. them, yep. test, shorten them, test. Yeah. And, and not to or, belabor 4D, but like the design is going to, you're going to validate that with yeah. your user. So every time you've crossed through that middle, it's the user crossroads. It's right. when you empathize with, with users and you validate with users. Yeah. And as you validate that, and it seems pretty good and their performance is acceptable of where we need to be at that moment in time, we'll deliver that using our, our DevOps techniques and any other, or whatever you're producing, you use that delivery. Mm -hmm. But that delivery also is, is measurement. Mm -hmm. Right throughout that, you're you're getting now back into the discovery of measure, measurement. How do I measure it? What is the measurements are saying during you know for months down the road, weeks right. down the road? It's 
informing it's an intake of informing performance it could be that the landscape of our market changed and now we've discovered that this isn't the product anymore or this right. isn't the feature we needed anymore it needs to be sunset or we need to enhance it so keep discovering keep mm -hmm. keep 4d all the way across and and i think um it's that's, an easy way to think about it like 4d right it's an incremental yep continuous yeah delivery right it's so small it falls in with that and it's large yeah right it could be well, as big as it's a small mountain. and it, it becomes your your yeah. stacking success after Absolutely. success right i remember we did a uh you asked me to talk at asc one time and there's a gentleman that raised his hand he's like what happens when it fails and then i said well it, it never fails because if it fails it fails early <laughs> right like we're getting feedback all the time mm -hmm. and he couldn't grasp that like i could have I wouldn't have been able to grasp that if somebody told me that we it never would failed. if you were like it sounds very pompous and yeah. saying like we never fail, but the truth is we fail early, right? Like and we continue and to we fail. We don't have that problem. Like fail up, right? That's yeah, the fail terminology. Up. We keep failing up until we have success. Yeah, yeah. it would be scary be if you failed and you never it. approached never it again, fail. right? Yeah, like if you never approached that right that again, yeah, yeah. failure sucks. Yeah, right, failure's dead. Right. Like in certain circumstances, oh, failure could be death. It's hard to pick yourself right. up. <laughs> <laughs> like in the military or something like that. You know, if you've messed up, and maybe and that's why I said there is some certain degree yeah. of activities that may need more risk assessment. I mean, right? that's a that's a good mentality, right? So like like failure is good. Like how do unless like, you're dead. Right. <laughs> But that's why you go and train it. Thanks, man. Right? But then it's but that's <laughs> but you, why but, you go and but train. Is it that's why you march. That's why you, like I'm saying, like He's in the military. I don't I don't want to use military as a military. I know, and it's a tough one. But yeah. they do do extraordinary things and they don't often fail, right? But they train but it's a perception over right? and over. Like and we've over. had we've had successes, other people succeed based on other people's failures, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there you go. Like, a just right. like the first person that ate a mushroom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have a one no! in what, what a <laughs> chance. Well, of... we shouldn't eat that now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so fail up, right? That's that's another terminology you've heard. Is how do you fail up? I think that's the key. Um, how do you keep trying? How do you keep hitting it? Mm -hmm. And then learning and then keep Keep moving, right? Hey, Daniela. Daniela. <laughs> Daniela. Um, Why do I want to say Dan Daniela? Because I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Now, um, <laughs> so I think when we're talking about the people that are going to be watching this podcast at this point. If everybody's are, still watching. Yeah. <laughs> the, the two that are still here. Um, Let's not talk about death. Let's not talk about <laughs> no, this is the fun part. War. That's the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, we yeah, look at the stats everybody. and everything. Thanks, that, guys. That says death. <laughs> You'll get your bonuses next week. Um, no, but I think we all have. So when we talk about the orchestration of product and how we produce it from vision all the way to execution, Right. We have the skills. We have those skill sets because mm -hmm. we've been practicing them in, in different places, yep. right? If you're able to uh, take sticky notes and move them in an order, yep. you are affinity diagramming, yep. right? That is a technique, one of the biggest techniques that you can do in this in this process. Mm -hmm. You got sketching, so do you just need a piece of paper and you need a, pen, a, a Sharpie, so you better load up on those things yeah. and start drawing, right? Just get those ideas out, yep. of, your, out of your mind. Exactly. And what other one? I mean, and mapping, you know, yeah. if you can put stuff in an order in which it happens in a timeline of some sort, yeah. you know, then you can do that too, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to be a visual designer. No. You don't have to be an amazing researcher, although I think having research techniques is definitely nice. helpful. Yeah. Um, but anybody can well, do I think, this. I think that's like, you know, what we use design thinking is to point us in the direction. Right. And then you everybody then you, diverges, right? Right. Then you go. You come something. together, and you decide how are we going to apply each one of our right. capabilities mm -hmm. to move a specific thing forward. And then we diverge, right. and then we come back, and it's like, what do we learn from it, right? And we'll probably do some other podcasts or some even meetups on 
how we go and decide what kind of how might we feature yeah. is valuable or we should do first and yeah. start now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have a lot of debate with business type consulting that, you know, they want to understand the value of that. Right. And that's great. That's the awesome partnership of that, yeah. of those two people working together is that we can take this, the a thing that we all agree that is a problem. However, we don't agree or we don't know per se that we, that it is the most valuable thing to, to do. Yeah. Um, but we understand that it could be valuable or it's probably most likely valuable. Well, I think with the, the product, like the product mindset, right? right. Like you're, instead of, having someone that that is analyzing how things are going and adding value to the things that are happening, we're asking the team to tell us what that value is, right? right. Tell us what their value is and how the activities that they've done achieve that value, right? Yeah. And that's that's kind of like the shift in that business leader mindset as well. Absolutely. But I would say like for me on uh, some books and like late in the game, but from a business perspective, a business and process perspective, the goal was a huge one for me. Like that was um, one of those things that I just started seeing how you can apply the 4D process, how you can apply empathy, you know, discovery, everything to just about everything in life. Absolutely. <laughs> everything has stages and steps. And we either want to like fi figure out how to automate those steps in our life how to get to those steps faster or how to prevent those steps from happening right. like death. Like death. <laughs> so there's huge industries. Yeah. So in like, <laughs> you know, some of the, some of those conversations we should get into and not get into too much, but just help people make that connection is some of the words like cycle, cycle time, throughput, things like that. Um, it's so empowering for anybody that's in product or user experience. So. Yeah. Well, I think we're coming up to the uh, the hour, and I think that's all I wanted to push out there this first time, which I'm really amazed that it flowed all the way through. I, was, I knew it was going to happen. This I knew. <laughs> yeah, once the mouths just keep flowing, right? That's what I like. We I don't like wanna, to talk. Yeah, I don't want to. We should just bring them to lunch with us. Man, like some of the conversations. Okay, there. everybody, <laughs> lunch is on Danny. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we will meet at the... Uh, Cracker Barrel. Not the Cracker Barrel. Not furs or lots. <laughs> What's one of those big, you know, Golden Corral? It's Golden Corral. I don't even know where one of those are. China Buffet, the four ninety nine. Yeah, buffet. I've been wanting to. Okay, this is a funny story, and this I'm gonna exit with this. Story. It's not even a, a funny story, but it's um, it's more of a trying to get your kids. So here's my problem: trying to get your kids to eat more things, right? Different things, yeah. and you don't want to go and make that at home. And then have them spit it out and go, great, I just wasted a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah. So what I was thinking is like finding one of those places, which now I cease, I cannot find them. I think COVID <laughs> annihilated them all, you know, being these group settings. Right, with <laughs> the the breed over all the, the food. The yeah, food those which right now I could care less. Right. But, <laughs> but we'll go in there and then have a little competition where the kids will, they have to, you can take small amounts. Oh. Who and then, the and who tries the most is the winner, and they it. get something. And who likes the They most? get my love. They get more. <laughs> Can of my I just love show up and get free food? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. Yeah. Kids will win. yeah, I'm sure because they've been introduced to some crazy stuff. Anyway, uh, thanks for coming. I'm really happy that this went off uh, without a hitch, uh, except for my my microphone being in my pocket for <laughs> the first part of it. Um, but anyway, thanks for coming, and uh, I'll see you the next time we do this, yeah. which is probably soon. This is exciting. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. See ya. And now.